Hey everybody, it's Mr. N, and we are going to do our next lesson. This is on proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So let's go ahead and get started. These are the ones that we'll do in class, but let's go ahead and get started here on some of our notes. We've got a few theorems. First of all, I want you to pay attention to this. The number one condition for a quadrilateral to be a parallelogram is a definition. Right? That's how it's defined, is opposite sides are parallel. That's our number one thing that we'll always look for, are opposite sides parallel. Because that's the definition, that's how we define it. Now, these are the other characteristics, theorems. Now, if we have one pair of opposite sides that are parallel and congruent, then we know it's a parallelogram. If we have both pairs of opposite sides congruent, then we know it's a parallelogram. If we have both pairs of opposite angles congruent, then we know that it's a parallelogram. So, if we can show that, here's the next one, if we can show that the consecutive angles here are supplementary, then we know that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And then finally, if we can show that the diagonals bisect each other, then we know that it's a parallelogram. Now, going back to the supplementary one, it needs to be supplementary to both the angles here. So if one angle of a quadrilateral is supplementary to both of its consecutive, so x has to be supplementary to this one and to this one, then we know it's a parallelogram. Now, typically, the five most common ones, and we'll summarize them right here, and then the sixth, I'll explain it, the first one is the definition. Definition. Opposite sides parallel. The second is opposite sides congruent. The third is opposite angles congruent. The fourth is one pair of opposite sides parallel and congruent and the fifth here that we're going to be saying is a diagonals bisect each other now the sixth is the supplementary one so the sixth is one angle supplementary to both consecutive angles. Now, more often than not, you will see one of these first five used, but yes, you will see number six, but typically these are the ones we look for right away. Opposite sides parallel, opposite sides congruent, and one pair opposite sides parallel and congruent. Okay, let's move on to the next page, and let's see what we got here. So here's a summary again um, of the ones I just said. Show that both opposite sides are parallel. Show that both the opposite sides are congruent. Show that the opposite angles are congruent. Show one pair both parallel and congruent. And show that the diagonals bisect each other. And then we have that sixth one, which is if you can show uh, one angle that's supplementary to both its consecutive angles. Okay? And that's pretty much the lesson, is how to identify if something is a parallelogram. So we're going to do some examples here. And let's take a look at the student journal ones we'll do in class. But the first one, what theorem or definition enables you to deduce that A, E, I, O is a parallelogram? Well, if I know that A, U is one half of A, I, and I know that O, U is one half O, E, that means the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, if I know that angle EAO, EAO, this one right here, is congruent to EIO, that one right there, and I know that AOI, this one in here, is congruent to AEI, that one in here, well, this is opposite angles congruent. Okay, what values of x must x and y have to make the quadrilateral parallelogram? Well, we know that these have to be consecutive to each other. We know the opposite angles would have to be 
the same. So we can say that 3y would have to be 123, which would give me a value of y for 41 degrees. Or 41, sorry. So this angle is 123. And so then I would know that 2x minus 5 plus the 123 has to be 180. So then solving this, I get 2x minus 5, subtract 123, I'll get 57, add 5, I'll get 2x equals 62, so x is 31. Okay, for number 2, let's take a look. Over here, I know the diagonals would have to bisect each other, so if I set this first one up, I could say 2x equals x plus 9. I can also say 3y minus 8 equals y plus 12. And let's go ahead and solve each one of them. Bring the x over over here, you get x equals 9. Over here, bring a y over, you get 2y equals uh, 20. y is 10. And now this last one over here, well, if these are parallel, if I want this to be a parallelogram, those have to be parallel. So 3x equals 45. So x is 15. Over here, 7y would equal the 4y plus 21, so 3y equals 21, so y would be 7. Now let's move on to the next one, and we've got a proof here that we're going to do. And it says, given that we have <coughs> parallelogram wxyz, so parallelogram wxyz, and I'll put that in red right here, wx, y, and z. That's our parallelogram that we're given. And mz is perpendicular to wn, and ny is perpendicular to wn as well. All right, so now we need to prove that this blue one, I'll put it in blue, or I'll just put it in green here, um, is a parallelogram. So m, n, y to z. This is the one we have to prove. We're given the red one. I'll also indicate our givens in red that n, uh, mz mz is perpendicular to wn, so we have that right there, and that ny is perpendicular to wn as well. So we have right angles up there. So let's go ahead and do our proof. Let's uh, state our givens, and here's our statements and our reasons. I'm going to put all this stuff in here, and that's the given. I'm going to be a little lazy and not write it in right now. Okay, step two. Well, since we know that it's a parallelogram, we can say that Wn is parallel to Zy by definition of parallelogram, right? Opposite sides are parallel. And now that we know that they're parallel right here, right, I can say that Mz is perpendicular to Zy and uh, N, NY is perpendicular to ZY, and that's because we have a theorem that says if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other. And now I can say the measure of angle ZMN, ZMN, the measure of angle N, the measure of angle NYZ, and the measure of angle um, MZY equals 90. And this is by definition of perpendicular. Perpendicular forms 90 degree angles. And so now I'm pretty much done. Step five, um, all of these are congruent, which means um, M, N, Y, Z. I probably should put that step in saying that they're all congruent by definition of, or just by substitution. But I'm going to skip that and just say right here, M, N, Z, N is a parallelogram. And the reason is opposite sides, or op sorry, opposite angles, opposite angles congruent. 
Okay, so I did skip one little step in there, but you can put that substitution step to show that they're all congruent to be 90. All right, let's take a look at this last problem right here. We need to show that this is a parallelogram by using the definition of parallelogram. The definition of par parallelogram tells me that opposite sides are parallel. Okay, what I want to do right now is I want to quickly sketch a graph of this situation, and I'll do it right here. And I'm going to plot these points, and we've got negative 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is J. Negative 4, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. This is K. 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is L, and 6, 7, 0 is M. So we've got this parallelogram right there. Okay, by the definition means we need to find that opposite sides are parallel. So I need the slope from L to K. So in order for me to get the slope from L to K, here are my two points. So that's, remember, the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we can find this slope from L to K, and we, we'll just say 5 minus negative 1 over 4 minus negative 4. You could have done it the other way around, too. It gives you the same answer. So this is 6 over 8, which is going to be... Um, and when I say the other way around, you could have said negative 1 minus 5 and then negative 4 minus 4. And then the negatives will reduce anyway. So this will be 6 over 8, so which is 3 over 4. All right, let's find the slope now. Since we did L to K, let's find M to J. M to J. And from M to J, that's going to be 0 minus negative 6 over 7 minus negative 1. And that's going to give me 6 over 8, which is 3 over 4. So right here, we've got KL parallel to JM. Now let's do another one. Let's do this one right here. We'll say KJ, so the slope from K to J. So the slope from K to J would be negative 1 minus negative 6 over negative 4 minus negative 1. So this is going to give me 5 over negative 3. And now let's do the slope uh, from L to M. From L to M, that's going to be 0 minus 5 over 7 minus 4. And that will also give me negative 5 over 3. And so now we can say that K to J is par which is the same thing, right? If the negatives on the bottom or negatives out on the top, it's the same thing. The whole value is negative. So k to j will be parallel from L to M. And thus, opposite sides parallel. So uh, j, k, l, m is a parallelogram. All right, and we'll stop there. So hopefully that wasn't too bad. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.